I think artificial intelligence offers us some terrific opportunities in the whole area of biblical studies. But the first step, if you're going to use AI, is to choose which AI you're going to use. The whole area is very dynamic and very fluid right now. Uh, what is true today could be different two weeks from today. So I'm giving you a snapshot of uh, what the situation is as of March 14, 2025. You will want to make your own evaluation and decide which AI will serve you best. Let me share my screen. So the AIs that are possible to use right now include Flowed AI, DeepSeek.com. DeepSeek is from China. It made a real splash uh, a month or two ago uh, in the media. Perplexity.ai. This is a really interesting one. This was really built as a Google killer. It has real-time access to the internet, and you can ask the same kind of questions of it that you would ask Google and get back a response without some of the clutter that Google feeds. It's also uh, literate in Greek, uh, ancient Greek. U.com, there's Gemini at Google, there's Copilot at Microsoft, and there's Chat GPT. So what I did to evaluate them, I decided I would evaluate three different AIs this week. And so what I wanted to do was to create, I told in my query, what I wanted the AI to do was to produce a scholarly commentary on John 133. And I attached a document which contained a model of what I wanted the AI to give back to me uh, in terms of the type of content, the format, uh, and the depth of analysis. So what I did was on my own, I created a, uh, a document, a commentary on 1 Thessalonians 4.1, and said, this is exactly what I'm looking for from any New Testament verse. This is what I would like the AI to give me. So I started with Deep Seek and I gave it uh, this prompt and it did a pr pretty good job. Started out with uh, the text of John 133 in Greek. It translated it, provided its own translation. Every Greek word or phrase is bolded the initial translation of a phrase is in italics. Subsequent translations are uh, just in parentheses. But it's bolding every instance of a Greek word. I'll go through and get a feel for the depth of analysis. If you look in the upper left corner, you'll see that I try to measure this in terms of the number of screens worth of data that Deep Seat presents. Uh, the second AI, I'm going to go back so you can compare it sort of side by side with Deep Seat. Perplexity starts with an introduction to John 133 and then goes on to the textual analysis, presents the Greek text, provides its own translation, does not italicize this, so it does not do a great job with the format I asked for, but does uh, an analysis of the words that are used and does a theological analysis and interestingly, a contextual analysis, given the historical context of John 133. And here's the conclusion, and it's just a little bit more information than Deep Seat presents. It's very similar, though. Flow.ai uh, did an excellent job of handling the format I asked for. Here's the initial Greek of the text. Uh, here's Flood's translation. I asked for the initial Greek word or phrase to be bolded. 
immediately followed by a, an English translation italicized and then have subsequent Greek words show up uh, unbold. And Claude did it the best job of anybody. And you can see that here back in uh, deep sea, without me asking for it, and in fact, rather contrary to what I asked for, it bolds every possible Greek word, whereas Claude does not. So let's move ahead. We've got Claude uh, providing quite a bit of analysis. And here we're coming up on the limit for deep sea, the limit for perplexity, and Claude is still going strong. Now, prov providing more data is not necessarily mean better analysis, but in this case, I've gone through it and it genuinely is better. And one thing I asked for that neither of the other two AIs pr provided was I asked if there were any textual variations to please discuss those. And you can see that uh, Claude is aware of the key manuscripts that are used for the New Testament. And it has quite a bit to say about uh, these and finishes by saying none of these textual variations significantly affects the theological meaning of the passage. And that's good. But I really appreciate, and in my case, just because of my own interests, I wanted to have it talk to me about uh, those. So let's look at a couple of other things. There is something that you need to know about Claude 3.7, particularly if you're using uh, the free version of Claude, uh, that if the servers become busy, it will bounce you down 3.7 Sonnet is its latest and greatest version. And it will bounce you down to version 3.5 Haiku or maybe even version 3.0 or version 2.5. It varies with what uh, the, the Cloud servers, uh, what kind of load they're under. And I have found that if you drop below Cloud 3.7, it's worthwhile flipping over to perplexity. Uh, if you can get access to a pro level question. Another thing about Claude that's helpful is you can choose the style, either normal, concise, or explanatory. And I always choose explanatory because I want it to unpack the biblical text for me as clearly and methodically as it's able to. If you try to use DeepSeek, be aware that this is hosted in China and that the Chinese government uh, really filters everything. Uh, this means if you're asking about the Gospel of John, you're likely to get good data. If you ask what happened in Tiananmen Square, uh, you're going to get an answer that says, sorry, that's beyond my current scope. Let's talk about something else. I think this means that if you have any friends or acquaintances in China, uh, believers, if you know anything about the church in China, you want to stay away from deep sea because the government of China is monitoring everything that you type there, and you could get your friends in trouble. So evaluate your AIs and choose the one that serves you best.